Hello and welcome. I was going to put a video today on doing a capacitor replacement for the Sega Genesis Model 2 version VA3 board. However, I was also reviewing this desoldering iron tool. It is a combination soldering iron and desoldering pump. It is the Tinma 21-8240. Uh, it might be the 21-8 420. I'll put the, the correct product number above my head here. Uh, but as I was using it, I was just so incredibly amazed by it that I had to stop that video so I could do a quick product review of this one. And I'm just going to answer the question right off the bat. Should you get this product? And the answer is only if you hate yourself and whatever electronic project you're working on at the time. This thing is a piece of crap and it belongs in your garbage bin. While I was using it, I desoldered nine, count them, nine soldering pads. They're just gone. And I was real careful when I used it also. Uh, it has no heat control. So I put it on the pad, gave it just enough time for the solder to turn molten and popped it up real quick. And even with that, I lost nine solder pads. But there's a way to come back from this. You're not completely lost if this happens to you when you're doing your desoldering project. I'm going to show you uh, what happened to my board and then how you can recover if it happens to you. Okay, so here's where most of the damage actually occurred on my board. Uh, down here, I lost one of the pads for uh, capacitor one, a uh, CE1, and then I lost all six pads for, uh, for, for three of my capacitors that are used for the audio filter. Now, the good news is I was planning on doing the triple bypass on this board later on, to improve both audio and vid video on this this revision so this isn't too big of a loss for me as you can see this is this is just a horrible repair uh, this was the only way i could actually get it because when, when something like this happens you have a couple different options for how you can repair it the first option you have is to try and peel back some of the uh, some of the solder trace and then solder onto the trace now unfortunately for me that was not going to be a viable option for these points because the, the trace themselves are very small and they're kind of delicate. So me trying to solder a capacitor to that trace, you know, maybe someone, uh, maybe someone like Voltar, he could probably pull that off with his skill. I'm not at that level. And so whenever I try to solder onto a trace directly like that using a capacitor lead, all I do is end up damaging the, the trace itself. Like I just make, it makes things worse for me. So what I did is I had to get out my multimeter and turn it on to a uh, continuity test. And I, I went through and figured out, uh, I followed the trace to each point and figured out that yes, these are my audio uh, and, and where to terminate each one. So you can see that it actually, from the point at which I lost that capacitor, it, it's just a trace line and it, it switches size of the board a handful of times, but there's no resistors, there's no more capacitors between the chip the capacitors I lost, and then the the actual nine pin mini DIN connector. So all I had to do on the front side of my board is figure out where these capacitors were supposed to connect to on my sound chip. And once I figured out that, all I had to do was make a quick solder to that pin, which, I mean, this really isn't hard. I, I know that it's kind of intimidating when you think about doing anything that's kind of fine pitch work like this. Uh, this is certainly not the most fine pitch on the board. That'd be, uh, that'd be our main CPU over there. But I know that this is kind of, a lot of people are uncomfortable with that. Just take it easy, don't use too high of a heat, and it's, it's really not that hard. You just pre-tin the pin a little bit. I put a little liquid flux on there first to make sure I had a good contact, put on just a little fresh solder. Uh, I had a couple bridgings happen whenever I put on the fresh, fresh solder that I just scraped away uh, with my, my uh, soldering iron, made sure everything was nice and flat. Then I used a little jeweler's loop to really get in there and make sure that I didn't have any bridge connections. And once I did that, I soldered on my pre-tinned wires real quick, flipped it over the board, and then connected the capacitors to the wires. So, so all I did is basically I used wires to replace the traces I lost. And then, since there were no more connections, there's no resistors or anything for these straight up to the nine pin mini connector, I just did a, a wire straight to it. Now, obviously, uh, putting it over, directly over the, uh, the cartridge slot, not not my best choice. Uh, I just wanted to tack something up here real quick, real dirty, to make sure that this was going to solve the problem. And, and once I did this, and I did hear it come through fine, uh, well, you know, the long-term solution is gonna be something else. So I wasn't too worried about it. 
Okay, so the last two pads I lost were this capacitor pads right up here, and I lost both of them. This is for CE12. This is actually a capacitor for filtering the composite video output. So what I had to do to fix this is on this side, I found where the next point it connects to is, and I just took the capacitor leg, brought it over here, and tacked it on real quick. Uh, and yeah, it goes over several different traces. There's not much I can do about it at this point. Uh, on the flip side, I took the capacitor leg and I brought it to R49. This is where, I mean, there's a little via that comes through right here, but this is where it connects to. So uh, I will eventually trim off that point right there, that little leftover leg, because I don't want it bridging anything by accident. But you can see the trace line, it comes down here, and this is the, uh, this is your video processor basically for the Sega Genesis. Uh, it takes the RGB and it turns it into your composite, your sync, and your S video all in this chip. And then it also outputs uh, your RGB values uh, on this, these top three pins, uh, not counting the topmost pin. Topmost pin is, uh, I think it's ground. I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm some sort of uh, electronics genius for being able to figure any of this out. I'm not. Uh, I'm kind of an electronics idiot, to be honest. As you can see by the fact I had to replace nine lost solder pads because I was testing a desoldering iron pump. What I am able to do, and what you are able to do also, is read the specs on this board. You can look up the names of any chip on this board, and you'll get the pinout for it. And that's what I suggest you do on any electronic project, that if you're trying to, if, if this happens to you, you wanna figure out where these traces go. So get out your multimeter, do a continuity test, first of all. Figure out what that chip lands to. If you're very lucky, you will find that there is a resistor or a capacitor point nearby that you can solder onto. This is the most ideal situation because this will be a good solder point. If you're not too lucky, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go all the way to the, the chip itself and solder direct, directly onto the pins. This is very possible. You just have to take it slow and you just have to be calm about it and rational. Uh, use low heat, just enough to make the solder melt, pre-tin everything you're gonna be working with, and if some solder bridges everything together, all you have to do is calmly clean off your tip and swipe over it. Just keep swiping over it until the solder's gone. Don't rush this too much, you don't wanna damage it, uh, but swipe a little bit away, let it cool down, swipe a little bit more. You will not be damaging anything. Uh, and eventually the solder pad, the solder bridge will go away. Uh, if you really need to, you can get out some desoldering braid and use that to get off the excess solder. Um, I, I know it can seem intimidating, but you can recover from a situation like this, just like I did. So I, I also wanna let you know that this is not the long-term solution. This was simply me testing to make sure I could recover having done this. Okay, so you might be wondering why even bother trying to recover at this point? Like once you've messed up this bad, why not just throw this whole board straight into the trash bin? The answer is honestly a couple reasons. First of all, I actually have a better quality board with this fix right here than I started off with. When I started off, I had really bad gel bars on the video of this. And that's when, uh, on the Sega Genesis, it was especially noticeable on anywhere where it's a solid white screen. And you just have this vertical bar going up and down through the entire picture, like you're looking through gel bars. And after I did this fix, the gel bars were gone. Uh, the fix was beautiful. It looks great, even on my composite video. So just because something like this happens, it doesn't mean your board is dead. I have a better board now, and there's no reason not to be using it. Uh, I do need to clean up a little bit so I don't have things like my wires going over the game slot connector. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's causing any problems in terms of audio. Audio's crap no matter what on this board. That's why I'm doing the triple bypass here later on. But, you know, I have a better board. There's no reason to get rid of it. The second reason is that all this sort of equipment, it's getting older. It's, there are a finite number of boards, uh, original hardware left. Uh, there are certainly clone systems being released now, like Hyperkin and Retrovision are doing their clone boards. But at the end of the day, they're just clone systems. They are emulating original hardware using systems on a chip. And you know, for people out there who like the original hardware, we need to make sure that just because we mess up on something like this, that we're, we're not taking this board out of circulation. I can fix this board up even further and lose all this janky wire business and I'm gonna have an even better board and people are gonna look at it and I, I would be able to sell it and, and people go, okay, yeah, here's original hardware. It's working great and I wanna use it. Uh, and that is one of the third reasons that I'm not gonna throw this away. I wanted to make sure I could recover for, 
before I did anything else. But the third reason is I do plan on putting the Sega Genesis triple bypass on this board. And in that case, I'd actually be taking these capacitors off. So usually you take the capacitor off and then you solder to the solder pad with your wire. I'm not gonna be able to do that because I don't have a solder pad, but I can solder straight to the chip just like I've done here and I can clean it up so that it looks even better than how I did it right here. Uh, and for those reasons, uh, I'm not gonna get rid of it. And I highly encourage anyone, if this happens to you, and let me go even further, if this happens to you and you can't fix it, please don't throw it away. These boards are full of irreplaceable chips that someone out there is gonna want. Put it up on eBay, show people what's going on, and I guarantee you someone is gonna wanna buy that. It may take a while, but there's gonna be someone who goes, you know what, I need the Sega 315-566002 processor chip. I will gladly pay for this board so that I can have original hardware. Guys, I hope this helps you out. I hope you never have a problem like this. Uh, you know, I was definitely harsh on the Tinma desoldering iron tool because it destroyed my board over here. It was, I was able to fix it, but it still destroyed it. But I, I also wanna say, I'm sure there's a use case scenario out there where what you need is uncontrollable high heat on whatever you're doing. Maybe you have a large ground plane that you need to suck some solder off of, and this would probably be fine for that. It's just on these older boards and on this fine equipment where I'm replacing capacitors, resistors, and whatever, it's not worth it. But what you know is worth it is this product that I'll put up here somewhere, maybe to my side, maybe this side, I don't know, we'll see what happens with the video. This product is something that Gary over at Rock Solid Productions suggested to me. He just got it and he's really enjoying this and maybe someday we'll see a video from him on this product, which I have decided will be displayed here. And I highly suggest that if you enjoy this sort of retro talk, you go over to his channel because he is the one who actually got me to dust off all my old systems and start upgrading them. So until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.